गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स विल कंटिन्यू विथ आर यूनियन नंबर टू अगेन एंड टॉपिक नंबर फाइव विच इज वाटर ट्रीटमेंट एंड रिसाइकलिंग सो वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट एंड रिसाइकलिंग वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ कन्वर्टिंग वेस्ट वाटर दैट इज वाटर दैट इज नो लॉन्गर नीडेड और इज नो लॉन्गर स्विटेबल फॉर यूज इन टू बिल्ड वाटर दैट कैन बी डिस्चार्ज बैक इन टू द एनवायरमेंट it is formed by a number of activities including bathing washing using the toilet and rainwater runoff waste water is full of contaminants including bacteria chemicals and other toxins its treatment aims at reducing the contaminants to acceptable levels to make the water safe for discharge back into the environment there are two waste water treatment plants namely chemical or physical treatment plant and biological waste water treatment plant so biological waste treatment plants use biological matter and bacteria to break down the waste matter physical waste treatment plants use chemical reactions as well as physical processes to treat waste water biological treatment systems are ideal for treating waste water from households and business premises physical waste water treatment plants are mostly used to treat wa waste water from industries factories and manufacturing farms this is because most of the waste water from these industries contains chemicals and other toxins that can largely harm the environment the following is a step by step process of how waste water is treated first one is waste water collection This is the first step in wastewater treatment process. Collection systems are put in place by municipal administration, home owners as well as business owners to ensure that all the wastewater is collected and directed to a central point. So this water is then directed to a treatment plant using underground drainage systems or by exhauster trucks owned and operated by business people. The transportation of wastewater should however be done under hygienic conditions. The pipes or tracks should be leak proof and the people offering the exhausting services should wear protective clothing. Odor control. At the treatment plant odor control is very important. Wastewater contains a lot of dirty substances that cause a foul smell over time. to ensure that the surrounding areas are free of foul smell odor treatment processes are initiated at the treatment plant all odor sources are contained and treated using chemicals to neutralize the foul smell producing elements it is the first wastewater treatment proce plant process and it's very important port one primary treatment This process involves the separation of macrobiotic solid matter from the wastewater. Primary treatment is done by powering the wastewater into big tanks for the solid matter to settle at the surface of the tanks. The sludge, the solid waste that settles on the surface of the tanks is removed by large scrapers and is pushed to the center of the cylindrical tanks and later pumped out of the tanks for further treatment. The remaining water is then pumped for secondary treatment. next secondary treatment also known as the activated sludge process the secondary treatment stage involves adding seed sludge to the waste water to ensure that it is broken down further air is first pumped into huge aeration tanks which mix the waste water with the seed sludge which is basically small amount of sludge which fuels the growth of bacteria that uses oxygen and the growth of other small microorganisms that consume the remaining organic matter This process leads to the production of large particles that settle down at the bottom of the huge tanks. The wastewater passes through the large tanks for a period of 3 to 6 hours. Next, biosolids handling. The solid matter that settle out after the primary and secondary treatment stages are directed to digesters. The digesters are heated at room temperature. 
So the solid waste are then treated for a month where they undergo anaerobic digestion. During this process, methane gases are produced and there is a formation of nutrient-rich biosolids which are recycled and dewatered into the local farms. The methane gas formed is usually used as a source of energy at the treatment plants. It can be used to produce electricity in engines or to simply drive plant equipment. This gas can also be used in boilers to generate the heat for digesters. Next, tertiary treatment. This stage is similar to the one used by drinking water treatment plants which clean raw water for drinking purposes. The tertiary treatment stage has the ability to remove up to 99% of the impurities from the wastewater. This produces effluent water that is close to drinking water quality. Unfortunately, this process tends to be a bit expensive as it requires simple, special equipment, well-trained and highly skilled equipment operators, chemicals and a steady energy supply. And all these are not readily available. Next, disinfection. After the primary treatment stage and the secondary treatment process, there are still some diseases causing organisms in the remaining treated wastewater. To eliminate them, the wastewater must be disinfected for at least 20 to 25 minutes in tanks that contain a mixture of chlorine and sodium hypochlorite. The disinfection process is an integral part of the water. of the treatment process because it guards the health of the animals and the local people who use the water for other purposes. The effluent that is the treated wastewater is later released into the environment through the local waterways. Next, sludge treatment. The sludge that is produced and collected during the primary and secondary treatment processes requires concentration and thickening to enable further processing. It is put into thickening tanks that allow it to settle down and later separates from the water. This process takes up to 24 hours. The remaining water is collected and sent back to the huge aeration tanks for further aeration tanks for further treatment. The sludge is then treated and sent back into the environment and can be used for agricultural use. Wastewater treatment has a number of benefits. For example, wastewater treatment ensures that the environment is kept clean, there is no water pollution, makes use of the most important natural resource which is water. The treated water can be used for cooling machines in factories and industries, which prevents the outbreak of the waterborne diseases. And most importantly, it ensures that there is adequate water for other purposes like irrigation. The next topic is wastewater recycling. So wastewater recycling is emerging as an integral part of water demand management, promoting it thus the preservation of high quality freshwater supplies as well as potentially reducing the pollutant in the environment and also reducing the overall cost. Water reclamation or recycling primarily makes non-potable waste, wastewater useful thus saving the economic and environmental costs related to establishing new water supplies. Water recycling and reuse is the process of collecting, treating and using wastewater particularly from municipalities, industries and agriculture. The recycled wastewater can be used for irrigation or industrial purpose as well as for domestic purposes if properly treated. In some cases, Treated wastewater is indirectly used for drinking purposes, for example, by injecting it into the groundwater aquifers to increase the capacity and minimize salt water intrusion. So water recycling and reuse is an important adaptation response to climate change as the increasingly unpredictable weather patterns and their effects. For example, as severe droughts and sea level rise are likely to have negative consequences on freshwater resource quantity and quality. So this is your assignment number five. You have to explain the solid waste management in industrial areas 
and you have to explain in detail about wastewater recycling. You can give your attendance in the chat box now with your enrollment ID and section. Thank you. Cities and towns have sewerage systems in place to carry the wastewater from our homes, hotels, factories, and other establishments to a sewerage treatment plant where the wastewater is treated. It is then deemed safe to release into other water sources. The treatment of wastewater goes through different stages. Wastewater is treated to remove the physical, chemical, and biological contaminants present in it through various processes. Pre-treatment process involves the sewage being sent through grids or vertical bars that can remove large solid substances like metal cans, paper, and plastic materials. In primary treatment process, the sewage flows through the grid chamber very slowly so that the sand, pebbles, and soil settle down at the bottom. The sewage flows into the settling tank or sedimentation tank where the solid wastes like feces are allowed to settle down. Wastes such as soaps, oils and grease rise to the top of the wastewater. The waste material that settles down at the bottom is called the sludge and the floatable material is called the scum. Scum is then removed using a skimmer and sludge is removed with a scraper every few days. The water that is left out is called the clarified water. In the secondary treatment process, biological or organic wastes are removed. It is a biological process. This is done by transferring the clarified water into an aeration tank where air blowers bubble air, which helps the aerobic bacteria to grow and feed on the organic contaminants such as food waste, feces and other organisms. The mixture then flows from the aeration tank into the clarifier, where activated sludge settles out by gravity. The activated sludge so produced along with the sludge produced in the primary process is transferred to the digester, where it is decomposed by anaerobic bacteria. Biogas is produced in this process, which can be used as fuel or can be used to produce electricity. The activated sludge is then left in the sand drying beds. Some quantity of water in the activated sludge evaporates and the remaining quantity drains through the sand beds. This leaves behind the remaining dried sludge which can be used for making fertilizers or compost. In the tertiary treatment process, the leftover wastewater is treated with chlorine to remove the phosphorus compounds nitrogen compounds and bacteria. It is a chemical process. Chlorine tablets are added to kill the germs. This process is called chlorination. Then this water is let off into the water bodies. Excellent. The immersion. You may 
maybe thinking that she'd rather just let bygones be bygones and not think about this nasty part of real life. But here's the thing. Chances are you drunk water that was waste at some point. So you might want to take some time to understand this engineering process that makes dirty water clean. Here's where it starts. The toilet. Once you're done doing your business and flush that magical handle, your waste ends up at the inlet of one pretty interesting place, a wastewater treatment plant. Why is this place so interesting? Because it takes arguably one of the most disgusting substances in the world and turns it back into something that is essential to all life. Flushing just your toilet may not seem like a big deal, but when you couple it with thousands, if not millions, of others doing the same, it can result in some pretty high sewage flow rates. New York City has an array of 14 wastewater treatment plants that handle a combined 1.3 billion gallons of wastewater daily. That's enough wastewater to fill the Dead Sea with pure sewage in just eight years. And that's just New York City. There are an estimated 14,748 treatment plants in the U.S. alone that 76% of the USA's population relies on, according to the American Society of Civil Engineers. Understanding wastewater is crucial to understanding the critical infrastructure needed to support modern life. That brings us to the first step of the process that handles larger items in sewage, things like flushable wipes, 2 by 4s toys, or even guns. You name it, and it's probably been caught in a bar screen. Bar screens are exactly what you would think. They are large vertical bars that stand at the inlet of nearly every wastewater treatment plant, designed to stop larger items from getting to the plant and hurting machinery like pumps. This first process where bar screens are used is commonly referred to as pretreatment. The sole intention of pretreatment is to remove the outliers in the sewage and make the whole mixture a little more homogenous or slightly less chunky. Our screens are typically mechanically raked at certain intervals, depending upon the flow rates of the water treatment plant, although some older plants will still have annual removal processes. Whatever is removed from the bar screens is then sent off to your average landfill or solid waste handling facility. Or, in the case of unusual items, such as guns, they're sent off to the evidence locker in a police station to be investigated. Next up is the grid chamber. Grit chambers are the next steps in the pretreatment process following bar screens. Since these bars don't catch everything, larger particles called grit still need to be removed from the sewage as it is made even more homogenous. As the sewage flows into the grit chamber, the velocity of the rather viscous sewage is adjusted to allow for particles of sand and rock to settle out. This is needed because these particles can't be removed using chemicals, and they could potentially clog or destroy pumps later on in the process. There are three types of these chambers. Chambers, horizontal grit chambers, aerated grit chambers, and vortex grit chambers, which all accomplish the same task using slightly different methods. Following the grit chambers, the sewage will move on to the primary treatment process, which starts with a large basin called a primary clarifier. Primary clarifiers and clarifiers in general function on the principle of settling velocity. This term can be defined simply as the speed at which a particle settles. For wastewater being pumped into clarifiers, it's important that the flow rate of the water being pumped in doesn't exceed the settling velocity of the particles trying to be removed. In order to accomplish this, engineers will vary the size and number of primary clarifiers in accordance with the plant's permitted sewage flow rate. This ensures that at varying flow levels, solids can settle out of primary clarifiers to the correct quantities. At this step in the process, the slightly treated wastewater, which is referred to as effluent, is free of solids larger than 10 micrometers and should be all organic matter, which will be treated further. The top layer of the clarified water flows over a weir wall and into the next basin in the process called the aeration basin. Now begins the process of secondary treatment, the sole focus of which is to significantly degrade the biological content of the sewage. In many cases, this process starts with aeration basins. Effluent flows into the aeration basins, at the bottom of which are hundreds, if not thousands, of tiny air blowers that create bubbles through the water. The water is pumped into this tank along with something called return-activated sludge. You can think of return-activated sludge as a bunch of happy little bacteria that get to eat their favorite foods all day long. 
This introduction of significant amounts of bacteria along with the massive amounts of oxygen injected from the bubblers creates an environment perfect for the process of aerobic digestion. Summarized simply, it's the breakdown of organic matter along with the use of excess oxygen. Some older plants will add in another step before aeration basins referred to as biofilters or trickling filters. Found in many older plants, these filters essentially trickle the effluent over a medium like stone or plastic and allow for a film of bacteria to chow down on any organic matter in the water. This step is largely not used in newer plants due to more efficient and effective modern processes. But for plants with basins already installed, many still use them because they only benefit the treatment process in most cases. Following aeration basins, the effluent along with much of the sludge is pumped into a secondary filter or clarifier where some of the sludge is removed and pumped back into the aeration basins as the return activated sludge. Further settling of larger particles is also accomplished in these basins, as it is the final step of the process that will remove solids and larger biological matter. Water flows out of secondary clarifiers over a nearly identical weir wall to the primary clarifiers and moves on to the disinfection process. At this point, 85% of all organic matter is removed from the water and the effluent should be safe to drink in most cases, although you probably wouldn't want to. Disinfection is the final step of the process and is usually accomplished in one of three ways, either through chlorine, or ultraviolet disinfection. Each process has its benefits and drawbacks, with each being used commonly throughout the wastewater treatment process across the world. Chlorine disinfects the water through chemical disinfection. Chlorine, which you can think of as concentrated bleach, is added to the effluent here to kill off any remaining bacteria and organisms still living in the water. When chlorine is added to kill off the bacteria, it then has to be removed before it can be discharged, as to not kill off anything in the discharge location. After this, the water is safe enough to discharge into a stream or lake. Ozone disinfection is another method of disinfection that involves pumping an electrical current through the water that causes oxygen molecules to disassociate and combine with a free oxygen molecule, forming O3, known as ozone. Ozone is an incredibly strong oxidant and causes microbes' cell walls to leak rapid cell decomposition and overall damage to cells. In other words, it kills off bacteria. The last common method uses ultraviolet light to scramble bacteria's DNA so that they cannot multiply. In UV disinfection, the bacteria in the water aren't killed, rather they're sterilized, rendering